Y minus X. Y minus X. So lifetime of dogs is X hat Y. I'm wanting to come up with a right tail test. So if I define delta to be Y minus X, and if the alternative is delta greater than zero, Y minus X will be greater than zero, which will indicate Y is greater than X. Yes. In other words, the lifetime of cats will be greater than the lifetime of dogs. You see how I came up with it? Would it be wrong if you did a left tail test? Absolutely not. Would it be wrong if you did a two tail test? Absolutely not. But at the end of the day, you should be able to interpret things properly. So I define it this way because if I reject it, I will conclude cats, the lifetime of cats would be greater than dogs. So the larger this becomes, the more we have, um, or we will be going toward the alternative. In other words, toward the claim. Does that make sense? And we will have a right tail test. 32. Um, so, first we've got to put them in order. We will stick to the convention that we had. So, nine followed by oops, seven, nine, 11, 12, 13. 14, 16, 19, 20. That is the sort of data that runs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. M is four, M is five. We've got to pick the observations corresponding to y, which would be 12, 14, 20, 19, and 20. Good. So our hypothesis null would be delta equals zero, alternative delta greater than zero, make it right tail so that the larger the value, then we would reject the null. So the W statistic would simply be the sum of rounds corresponding to Y. So four plus five plus six plus eight plus null. Missing is not big. So W is 32. But if we have to use R for the exact test statistic, we want to convert it to U prime. So the first step would be to convert it to U. So W is simply U plus N times N plus one over two. Mind you, with U, we have to be careful here because if you define the samples in a different way, the formula is going to change. But I can relate to it if I just switch M to N and N to M, go, go back and forth, back and forth. But I don't want to confuse myself that way, which is why we're sticking to the same usual process. U is what we need, so 32 would be u plus n, five, five plus one over two. Thirty-two would be equal to u plus 15, which would imply u is 32 minus 15, we get 17. Yes? U prime, we need that too, which is U minus N times N. 
17 minus what is m times n? Seventeen minus uh, twenty, you will get negative three. We have to take the absolute value, correct? But because of symmetry, in this case, we should simply look at the value of u, correct? We are looking at a right tail test. So. When it comes to u, we have zero all the way up to 20. m times n would be the maximum. u prime is on this side, u prime would be three, which would mean on that side, u would simply be 17. Does that make sense? So we will keep u equals 17 because we are trying to do a right tail test. We can use R to find the critical value. In this case, the critical value would be on the right hand side, um, which is W sub or U sub alpha. The calculator is going to give us U prime, which we can move it to the other side to get the right critical value. So if alpha, what do I use at rate six? Okay, so the critical value is somewhere over there, and we have 0.05 for alpha. Q Wilcox would always take the area below. So if the area above is 0.05, what is the area below? 0.95. And we are sticking to our convention because M and they all matter. So four comma come again. That's for the P value. I'm trying to find a critical value. It's Q Wilcox. How about that? It fell right on the critical value. So, should we reject the null or not? Good question. Should we reject the null? It's supposed to be greater. No. It's supposed to be greater than or equal to. So, we would reject the null if the test statistic is greater than or equal to. So test statistic is in the rejection region. There is a reason why we often look at greater than or equal to, because think about it this way. Sure, I started with 0.05, yes, but at the very end, I may change my mind and say, well, I could keep it as 0.055 as alpha, in which case this will be rejection, correct? This is a borderline case, and if I encounter something like this in practice, I'll go get another sample before I say something. But it kind of is obvious, right? Um, so reject the null, which would imply lifetime of cats y is greater than the lifetime of dogs x. So is the claim true? Yes, there is evidence to word the claim. If you have to guess. The P value. What would that P value be? Is it going to be 0.05? It better be 0.05. Oh no. Oh 
Okay, so um you explain why you use the US city. So they are symmetric. If I used U prime, that would be a left hand tensor, right? I'm trying to look on the right side. So I'm using U. Right? If you flipped Y and X, that's what you will be testing for. Um, but, and that's because Y has factors. Yes. So P Wilcox will always give you the area below the test statistic. So 17, four and five. If I change it to lower dot tail equals true, I will get 0.96. If I set it to be false, get the value on the right hand side. I put a question. I asked you, is it going to be 0.05? Because I know it will not. Um, no. So the p value is 0 0.0317. So one may ask, well, why am I getting a different p value? In theory, that value is computed via simulation by a code by the computer. There are certain things that can only be done using simulation. So theoretically, I expect 0.05, but I get 0.0317. And we did reach the right conclusion. My p value is less than alpha. So we can perform a large sample approximation. All we have to do is make use of U and find the standardized test system. Can I erase this? We know mu is simply mn divided by two. Reason being, the expectation of u is the same as the expectation of u prime from last time. So five times four over two is ten. Sigma squared, m times n exactly, m plus n plus one divided by twelve. Um, that'll be twenty times 10 over 12, 50 over three, 16.67. No, it should actually be 16.3. It is six. Okay, which is six seven. So sigma would be square root of sixteen point six seven. Four points. Two. No. Four point four. Okay. One. Four points one. Okay, so approximately four point one. So the test statistic is simply u minus mu divided by sigma. U is seventeen. Mu is ten. Sigma is 4.08, which will give us 7 over 4.08, 1.
This is a right tail test, so the rejection region is on the right hand side. The area is 0.05. So, what is that critical value? Or how do we find the critical value? In this norm, mind you, the calculator always gives you the area below. So, 0.95, it's not gives you, it takes in the area below, which is 1.645. Did the test of this state fall in the rejection region? Yes, it's right over here. Should we reject the null? Yes, same conclusion. How do we find the p value? Is it the area above the test statistic or is it the area below the test statistic? It's the right tail test above. And what function do we use for large sample approximation? Normal CDF. Start at 1.715, and that's E99, mean is zero, standard deviation is one. And what do we get? Point zero zero something. It's going to be close to that part. Got point oh four. Oh. Zero four three example. One, One seven two five seven six. So 0 0.0417. Well, how about that? There's, there's a still 4317. Oh, 317. I got excited. How about that? 0.0417 and 0.0317. Well, you can add a 7 still. I can't, but that would defeat the pattern. Oh, true. <laughs> but it isn't as nice as 0.0417. But you get the picture. Should we reject the no? Yes, because the p-value is still is less than alpha. In practice, we would use that because we're dealing with small samples. In 